the narrative is this if you have hypermobility we all grow up with five senses we're very aware of them yeah. and i don't have to name them but there is a sixth sense this sixth sense is called joint proprioception effectively if i close your eyes and i said to you what angle is my finger at now instead of saying 45 degrees you might say this is 20 degrees right, or you yeah. might say this is 45 degrees when it's bent all the way 90 degrees yeah and that lack of ability to understand where your joint is in terms of the angle in space is something called proprioception and that's known to be impaired because of the collagen disorder that characterizes joint hypermobility syndrome or Ehlers Danlos syndrome yeah people with Ehlers Danlos syndrome do not feel where their joints are which can explain why you were always twisting your ankles yep. as a kid you walk around and you run around in a playground or the gym and unlike other kids who can just look at the apparatus and run to it you might have had to always watch where your feet land yeah or if you're jumping off stairs coming off the last step you you tended to twist your ankle because you didn't know whether your foot was coming down flat or slightly crooked and if yeah. it lands slightly crooked it twists all the way and with the joints being lax it would cause a dislocation or subluxation yeah hence the injury starts now the other thing interestingly that this may do is when you have recurrent episodes where you twist and sublux you have to protect yourself because you feel unsafe and so unsafe you might even knock in a doorway i don't know if you yeah. remember <laughs> growing up or even now yeah the door is wide open you're walking oh, and somehow shoulders. your shoulder always catches the yeah. door frame now people who can feel their space of the body i.e how widely in space your body is tend not to knock into door frames yeah but you tend to knock into door frames yeah. and so you've had to heighten a degree of your five senses uh -huh. to compensate which means you're upregulated in hyper sensitivity uh -huh. you're hyper vigilant and the way we become hyper vigilant is to upregulate to an extent our adrenaline system yeah. because imagine if you are under attack under a fight or flight situation you want to actually bring on adrenaline so your visual acuity is super sensitive yeah you can hear things a pin drop you can you can sense a change in the wind direction or yeah. cold or heat and these are things that when you sit down in a busy restaurant you might dislike the clinging the clanging the shouting the laughing of the table next door you might dislike bright lights because throughout your life you've been upregulated with adrenaline yeah it could also explain a degree of interaction with the world or reaction with the world uh -huh. because people who are highly uh, hyper vigilant and become very reactive because of the adrenaline that needs to be there to protect yeah. you right ultimately because mm -hmm. you're not safe to step down is something that chronically charges you in a way that gives you that anxiety type backdrop yeah does that resonate yeah and so over time this heightened adrenaline gives you this profile that makes you react in a particular way because yeah. people who are very reactive are tend, tend to be hyper adrenergic and this can be something that sets you up to develop the kind of reactivity for example to covid to vaccines yeah. to all the other things in life that other people can shake off yeah. you tend to stick and it tends to linger yeah if i, I have felt worse since i had covid in the summer last year and i've felt knackered and worn out since then since so so this this reactivity can be a sense that your immune system is all ready to fire up if you yeah. if you think about in evolutionary terms if you're a gazelle grazing and a, and a lion comes out of long grass and chases you you want to upregulate and be super frighty or flighty so you want yeah. to be full of adrenaline so that when you get a scratch the healing cascade starts immediately and that's your immune cells being super reactive which yeah. means a scratch leads to immediate flare the cells the platelets come and close the clot and then the white cells come and heal over the area so you get super ridden inflamed but that is good yeah. if you're about to be scratched by a lion not so good when you're just drying yourself out with a towel and accidentally fingernail comes across and yeah. then it flares not so good when you eat lactose or gluten your yeah. tummy flares yeah. not so good when you lie down at night in bed and your histamine release comes in and that explains or one explanation of the mast cell syndrome that comes with that is that your cells your mast cells which are histamine containing immune cells right. are very activated all the time yeah and so in periods where you're 
more heightened, the mast cells can really come in and degranulate and give some people rashes uh -huh. and the degranulation causes the vessels to dilate more because that's what it does it dilates and causes the leaky vessels yeah you lose blood pressure which is already low yeah and then you feel dizzy yeah and then you cause yourself to have even more adrenaline to cope with the low blood pressure states because low blood pressure states are also a trigger for adrenaline to be released to improve your blood pressure both in terms of your heart contractility but also the heart speed or rate of contraction so yeah. heart rate will go up the heart contractility will go up and that also explains chest pain because suddenly your heart is working a lot faster and a lot stronger than it used to when you have these syndromes so when yeah. you wake up at night your heart rate is 160 you said can persist for 160 this is not you running no nor is it you suddenly being anxious yeah unless you tell me you have a panic attack in your dream which no. is highly unlikely no. so it's more likely a physiological basis and my best guess is you have mast cells that suddenly degranulate and you have histamine release typically yeah. in your stomach bed you drop your blood pressure even whilst lying down yeah and you have a reacting adrenaline spike and that's the thing that wakes you up with the palpitations and a chest pain and right. a short loss of breath yeah. it's not because your oxygen saturations are dropping it's because your adrenaline levels are rising, rising. right but yeah. and so you're panting yeah <sighs> preparing to run from the Lion, <laughs> yeah. exactly, because for for your stress system internally, it's no different to have a lion chasing you, having an argument with somebody, going for a job interview, or waking up in low blood pressure states. Yeah. I think that is what's happening in you, and I hope that anchors down how the connection between your ehlers danlos syndrome or joint hypermobility yeah. runs all in parallel to get your adrenaline levels up to cause all these other states. There's one other thing to say, which is your collagen is a bit relaxed. Yeah. So unlike um, a person, may I borrow your coffee cup? Yeah. Uh, I promise I won't drink it. But unlike somebody, say, who doesn't have EDS, when I stand up and if this is my blood vessel, the blood will fall with gravity into this cup and yeah. the cup will fill up. When the cup fills, it will continue to stack up and my blood pressure will fall transiently the cup or the vessel will squeeze a little bit with a bit of adrenaline and the pressure will come back up yeah. within five to ten seconds. Mine just pulled, in, Exactly. Yeah. In EDS, your vessels are so relaxed that they are like a balloon that's been blown a hundred times. Yeah. So when you stand up and gravity pulls blood into this cup, guess what? This cup expands and expands and expands. Yeah. And so for you you lose three or four times the amount of blood that other people would lose when you stand up. Yeah. And this is felt by the heart. As the heart empties of blood, becomes very dry, yeah. and every single contraction of the heart pushes out half the blood, say it used to. Yeah. And therefore the body has to compensate, right? By giving you twice as much, much heart rate, and yeah. that's done by adrenaline. So a second reason for the, thank you, a second reason for your adrenaline to really heighten up is because your vessels are relaxed. And if you put all of that together, it may explain how the progressive changes throughout the years have led to this state that you're in now. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Good. Yeah. Stop recording.